Okay, so here is the uh, finished manifold. Um, this manifold is made from a mild steel flange, which is this piece here, obviously. Um, these collectors here are made out of stainless steel, um, welded together into a log style. Now, I've got to be honest, this hasn't been TIG welded, as you probably can guess by looking at it. It has been MIG welded. Um, it isn't the most sexy or pretty, but it is good enough. As you can see, if I can zoom in closer there on the actual welds themselves, they are certainly good enough to withstand the kind of heat that this is going to see. Um, you know, this could potentially see up to 900 degrees. Um, I've actually put the collector for the or the outlet for the actual turbo itself is in the center of the manifold which is different to the standard layout the standard one and, and quite a few of the log manifolds that I've seen designed have got the actual outlet here which you know to my way of thinking is a lot easier for the positioning of the turbo because obviously it allows the air conditioning to be retained but for me I'm not too worried about air conditioning you know for me Air conditioning is not the primary issue, so I, I wanted the, the maximum amount of power, maximum amount of spool, and everything else. So I fitted the outlet in the middle of the turbo so that you're getting an even, or as even as you can, um, flow of gases into the center of the manifold and then outwards, which hopefully should maybe help spool a little bit, um, should hopefully reduce exhaust manifold pressure and should just help the turbo work a little bit better really. Um, there is considerable amount of fettling that needs to be done. Um, we need to fettle around these areas here just to make sure that the, the bolts with the washers can actually sit on, oh, sorry, nuts with the washers can actually sit on there. Um, the flange itself, has obviously been you know when it when it was welded it was welded to a flat surface and then all of these pipes were welded onto it um, to try and prevent it from twisting and warping with the heat but no doubt there will have been some twisting and warping with the heat which is going to require a skim across the face to make sure that this is completely flat because if it's not completely flat it won't seal then you're going to get nasty screaming noises if the leak is bad enough and if the leak isn't so bad, you're still going to get horrible stinking exhaust gases inside the inside the engine bay, which will find their way into the cabin. Um, so that's going to that's going to have a skim. There's also some fettling that needs to go on inside the runners themselves, just to make sure that everything is good. Because obviously, if you can imagine, all of these pipes here have got steps on them, and the steps obviously are matched up as well as you can. But there is going to be a little bit of a step here and there. Looking inside here, you can see that it needs a, a bit of fettling around there as well. And if you look right inside, there's a step in there which is going to need some tungsten carbide bits, which which is gonna, just going to have to clean the whole thing up. So, you know, the whole process is, is going to have to be extended to take into account cleaning all of this up and, and just making it so that there aren't any nasty steps inside the exhaust manifold. So we're, we're nearly there. We're getting towards the end.